Thursday already, but before we head into the weekend, let's take a look at those top stories right here on the Israel Brief with me, Rolene Marks, as always, brought to you by Lay of the Land. And we begin with a big story breaking earlier today, and that is IDF incursions into Jenin. Now, we have been covering Jenin over the last year or so. This is a town in the West Bank. It is known to be a terror hotspot, a hotspot of incitement. And following high-level intelligence from the Shin Bet, that is the Internal Security Services, the IDF launched a counter-terror incursion into Jenin earlier today. At least nine Palestinians, including an elderly woman, were were killed in a heavy exchange of fire. Now, the IDF have not released too much information, but did confirm that they were on the hunt for a wanted Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorist. Meanwhile, the United Nations Special Envoy to the Middle East, Tor Venisland, called it uh, his uh, deeply alarming and he was saddened by the deaths of nine Palestinians. Conveniently missing from his statement was any concern about any terror attack to be carried out against Israeli civilians. Meanwhile, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has declared three days of mourning and uh, defense officials anticipate that there could be rocket reprisal attacks coming from terror entities in the Gaza Strip. Last night, Prime Minister Netanyahu and Finance Minister Betzalel Smotrich held a joint press conference to try and allay fears by the international community over proposed plans to overhaul Israel's Supreme Court. This is a, a very, very big issue in Israel. It is one that is creating huge chasms in Israeli society and has raised a lot of concerns. We have been speaking quite extensively on the Israel Brief about the protests and the different sectors of society who are joining in these protests. Now, the Prime Minister and Finance Minister accused the opposition of trying to sow hysteria. And in his response, the head of the opposition, former Prime Minister Yair Lapid, said that the press conference was hysteria. Meanwhile, 250 economists have warned about the possible economic repercussions should these overhauls go ahead, and environmentalists have said that they will become the next group of people to protest outside the Prime Minister's residence. Ex-IDF commandos will also be joining in the growing protests. Meanwhile, earlier today, two big companies have divested from Israel. This is Papaya Global and Disruptive AI. They have cited concerns about possible judicial reforms as their reason. And uh, it is expected that more companies could possibly follow. And the question everybody is asking, is the government paying attention? Now, tomorrow is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And in anticipation of this day, uh, President Herzog has addressed the EU Parliament in Brussels. Opening his speech by putting on his kippah, his yamuka, the President spoke about how his late grandfather, who was the chief rabbi of the land of Israel, in 1946 went to Europe to try and rescue and relocate Jews who had managed to survive the Holocaust. Herzog also spoke about how he rewrote the El Ma'alera Hamim prayer, the God full of mercy prayer, to include the victims of the Holocaust. Opening his address by intoning Kaddish, the traditional prayer for the dead, Herzog spoke directly to EU leaders and said that they need to be aware and read the warning signs. He said they need to be able to read the signs and deal with this pandemic of anti-Semitism that has reared its ugly head and fight it with all their might. He says they have a responsibility to the Jews of their countries to be able to allow them to live without fear and in safety. Now, tomorrow is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. It is a day designated by the United Nations to remember and to educate about the horrors of the Holocaust. 
It is a day set aside to remember the over 6 million Jews who were systematically slaughtered, marked for death regardless of age or gender, simply for the fact that they were Jewish. It is also the day to remember the genocide of the Roma and Sinti, members of the LGBTQ plus community, members of the disabled and special needs community, and anyone believed to be either a political dissident or to be a subhuman by the Nazi murdering machine. As time marches on and as we lose Holocaust survivors, on a daily basis. So it is up to us, this generation, to ensure that we never forget, that we perpetuate memory. So I want to appeal to you all today, either to light a candle of remembrance tonight, or to go onto the Yad Vashem site. If you simply Google Yad Vashem, Y-A-D Vashem, V-A-S-H-E-M, and uh, Go onto their hall, their, their wall of remembrance and choose a name. Learn that person's story because unto every person, unto every victim, there was a name and a story and a family that was snuffed out. This is our opportunity, independent to Yom HaShoah, which is Israel's Memorial Day for the victims of the Holocaust. This is an international day. This is a day to remember the victims and reignite our vow of never again. And it is up to us to ensure the perpetuation of memory and education. So that brings us to the end of today's edition of the Israel Brief. Don't forget to check out our original content online. There is an article written by me that looks at propaganda, how it has been used in a pop culture example and in a news example to try and pull the wool over people's eyes. It's also on our Facebook page, that's at Lottle's site. While you're there, please give us a like, a follow, share our content. Don't forget our YouTube channel is at The Israel Brief. Give us a like, a follow and click on that red subscribe button. Let's get that community growing. And we're on Twitter as well. Our handle is Lay of the Land 5. Click on the follow icon and uh, be in touch with us. That's where we interact with our viewers, our readers, our listeners and our friends. But uh, all that remains before we head into the weekend is for me to wish you Shabbat Shalom wherever you are, a wonderful weekend. And join me again on Monday as I bring you those top stories from Israel.